When women interact at a bar, you guys are like a military platoon, right? Men are like uh, solo snipers. Walk to the jungle and I tell him, you go that way, I go this way, okay? You guys watch each other's back. So if you're talking to your girlfriend this way, she's automatically looking over your shoulders. Oh, yeah. That's how you guys watch each other's backs. Guys don't do that. Yeah, women are like that, but women are also wanting the guys to approach us. Hi everyone, it's Karen Lee of the Karen Lee Potter Show and I'm here with the infamous porn star, Derek Pierce. What's up? <laughs> Derek and I have done some videos before, but it was all via Skype and this is the first time we're meeting in person. And non-sexual video. They're non-sexual. That's the morning you had and what I do for a living, that could be very suggestive. That's exactly true. <laughs> I want to hear the, the Derek, the personal Derek. I don't want Derek the porn star as much as I just, I think you are charming and I think you've got a way with women and a lot of guys just really relate to you. Yeah. First of all, how old are you? 41. And you've been doing porn for how many years? Almost 10 years. Wow. When did you lose your virginity? Let's start with that. Uh, when I was like 13. I was 19. That was, that's very young. So you gradually became more confident in your sexuality. How do you attribute that? You know, it's probably more of a sales pitch. So if, if you were the person that I was talking to and we're talking about potential sexual endeavors, yes. I would never in my wildest dreams tell a girl, like, I'm going to rock your world. I'm going to be the best thing that's ever happened to you kind of shit. The ridiculousness that men do. The truth is, is every time you're with somebody for the first time, it's almost like being a virgin again, right? You don't really know what makes them tick. Like, right. you understand, you know, insert slot A into port B. Right. You get that. You, but you don't have their owner's management. You don't, you don't have the reviews. You don't know how to handle or perform or anything. The person does want to feel special and unique. Yeah. And so if you find out more information about them, you're making them feel good about themselves at the same time you're able to understand what's going to make them tick. Yeah. Everybody will say the same thing about me. You're six foot whatever, and you're throwing whatever pounds, so you're in shape, and you're not bad looking, so right. you have a different, you're your card shape. game is very different yes. than what, you know, Joe Schmo is. Right. But I have another friend, and he hates it every time I mention it, but I don't care. My friend Chewy, and Chewy is five, six, five, seven, a hundred nothing pounds. He's not ugly, but he certainly is not like a male model either. Chewy gets more dime piece pussy than anybody I've ever seen on the planet. And why do you think that is? Because he's fucking funny. He's funny. Because he's, he, and he's confident. And it doesn't always have to be like the negative thing. Because I've, I've seen a lot of these guys who are like, you know, teaching guys how to get laid. And they're like, well, knock them down a peg. Don't treat them like a 10 because everybody else does. And while there's some validity to that, you don't have to be an asshole because it's such a fine line. You have to make it relaxing and funny. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And I don't agree with whoever your friend is and knock them down a peg. Because oh, he wouldn't. I mean, yeah, a lot of the, the, <laughs> the pickup artists, you know, all of their material. Right. And that's why I wanted to interview yeah. you and that them. Because a lot of guys are writing, are writing in and asking me these same questions. Who do I meet a cougar? How do I get her to go out with me? What would step one be? I always think you have to make yourself relevant. The age thing is, it really is just a number to I agree. agree. If you're going to be walking in with a skateboard and a backpack, the chances of you pulling somebody that's 10 years older than you is probably not going to fly. Older women who aren't looking for anything serious are probably looking for somebody who's solidified, even yeah. if it's just on a mental level. How do you express that? We'll play the odds. Do you want to drink? No, fuck you then. Did you want to drink? No, fuck you then. Did you want to drink? Eventually, one of these bitches is going to be too drunk or say okay, and it never works. Right? Well, do you have better lines than do you, do you want to drink? Yeah, because I pay attention to what women to. Let's get to that. Yeah, so I know the difference between Jimmy Choo's and Manolo's. And you know more like than that. I do, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I didn't Impressive. learn these things on purpose, it just fucking just, happened. Well, because it's attached to females. That, to me, is just doing a little bit Key of research. Key point. And anything that yeah. females are going to be interested in yeah. is something that you would talk about and without being on a pickup line. Maybe. Right. I don't like a, a pickup line. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to open a conversation. Oh. What men have to do is uh, come off and disqualify themselves as a and we're not threatening, meaning I want something specific from you that you're already saying no to. Now we're open to communication. Prime example, yesterday was Super Bowl. So she was wearing yeah. a Broncos jersey and I said something like, who made you wear that? She was like, what? what are you talking about? And I'm like, I just want to know who made you wear that terrible. Please tell me your favorite color is orange. Because so she's you got the, you got the humor to. going. You're talking about something non-sexual. You're talking about yeah. something obviously that interests her. And, I, and I involve jersey. everybody in the table. And you, not every time you talk to a female doesn't have to be about the hookup. Right. Sometimes it's just, a friend. it's just about the conversation. And, and I find that to be the best way to do it. If I go to a lounge or bar or whatever uh -huh. social setting, I do like a hit and runs. So like I'll engage with you and yeah. then I'll leave. I'll engage with you and then I'll leave again. Yeah. So now we have rapport. I meet you, you know, hi, what's your name? Karen? Okay, cool, I'm Dean. Mm -hmm. You know, you're here with your friends? All right, listen, stay out of trouble. I'm going to get the hell out of your hair. 
and I, I leave, right? Good idea. Now you haven't had a chance to get comfortable and, and decide anything other than he was nice, he was engaging, he's gone. Now when I come back, if I touch you on the hip to get you to move out of my way when you weren't in my way, I can come through and I can be like, why are you in my way, girl? And I'm like, all right, bye. You're not a stranger anymore. Right. So now when you, that other girl that you're friends with does show up, yeah. and now I stop and talk to you, and hey, you want another drink already? Yeah. You blush. And then I can turn to her and say, I'm sorry, your friend is really fucking rude. I'm D. And now I can introduce myself right, to her. And now I put you on the spot yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, that's D. I just... Hey, do you like podcasts? Check out Sex Talk with My Mom, a podcast I do with my stand-up comic son. Really, really funny. I think you'll love it. It's easy. Just go to iTunes and type in Sex Talk with My Mom in the search bar and subscribe. 